A YouTube piping red beard arg. Uh, I gonna talk about a couple things here real quick. I'm taking a little break from my um, school work. I'm finished up my macroeconomics for the week, and then I got um, some apologetics left to do. Um, so read a lot I've done a lot of writing already and my brain is little uh, so uh, but I did want to um, just open this tin and try it um, I <laughs> it's been about maybe 30 minutes since I got done with a bowl of um, bullseye flake so might be a little weird but we're going to open up some old Shenandoah barrel edition I I like the old Shenandoah stuff um, it's one of the few aromatics I've had that really are easy they don't burn hot and um, they just they f their flavor keeps through the bowl more than most um, this the barrel edition is seems like it's it's always out of stock. Uh, and, it, and from what I read, it's going to be like a Lane 1Q type uh, pipe tobacco. Um, so we'll let's see what that is. And I'm going to put it in my Flame Green Peterson. Uh, as you can see, this is... Sorry, it's a little awkward for me to hold this, but it's an 05 shape. It's got the spigot. It's, it's the champagne, as they call the stem or whatever. So, um, th it, and actually this is almost a necessity for uh, this kind of shape for me because I'm, you know, I, I don't, I tend to be a little wet when I'm smoking so it's really easy to, throughout the bowl once it gets a little um, gurgly or something you just take this off from a pipe cleaner through it and you're done. So that's the advantage of the spigot and throughout the day you can actually keep this you know in your pocket or something if you want to I don't ever do that though um, I generally don't smoke this very often but that's what we're gonna use so first let's um, pop open the tin I've already uh, um, released the pressure so I don't <laughs> uh, we don't have to worry about that but it's gonna be yep, there we go so let's take a sniff shall we Woo. So that definitely has like a really strong vanilla smell, obviously. Man, that's but it's like a hint of a hint of whiskey in there. Probably smells fantastic. So let's um let's get this up and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a sec. Here's my clear. And so you have it. And let's see what we got. We'll pack a bowl here. Um, the the flame grain Peterson. I really like the f the look of it. <laughs> it's really what I, and it does hang well from the mount from the jaw, and it's comfortable. But it, for me, I have. Not that I really care so much if it goes out, but it does seem to not stay lit as much as some of my others. And that could be me, though. Just my preference here. So I put a little bit in there. I didn't... Maybe wanna, well, we'll just keep it a little light. Not quite a, quite a full ball. I didn't really pack it down as much as I probably usually do. Um... Because I'm probably not going to want a really long smoke experience this evening. Let's get the tin back together. Screw that on. Set that down here for now. So let's give it a give it a go, shall we? Hmm. 
That was the char light. So let's lightly, lightly. Boop, 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 boop. <coughs> All right, let's see what we got going on. Yep. It's a very smooth vanilla. That's kind of how I would categorize it. And it's like a 1Q, except... Like... The, maybe like the, the taste is amped up a little bit, you know? But not hot. Hmm. That's good. And the dryness. So I did, I did open this, uh, pop this open yesterday, and I, I kind of did that for a reason because I, usually I wanted to air out a little bit when it comes to anything with an aromatic, sugary topping like that, and that might have benefited the initial smoke here. Um. Because it's not too, it's not goopy. Um, let's just open it back up and I'll show you. It's not goopy or anything. And it's not like you can, it feels moist, but not, but see how it kind of, it does, it just crumbles away. It doesn't stick together. Okay. So you can see how much. <laughs> How much it actually bled through some of the paper. Let's get this back together again. That's really good. So while, while I'm enjoying this, I kind of want to talk about how I've changed in how I argue things. So social media has, I don't know, it's, it's, there's good things and there's really bad things about it. And, and, and most of the times I think it's just, it's really not in in its design but in its use by we humans just people feel the need to just constantly throw stuff out there and um, no consideration or decorum uh, when it comes to discussing anything because you're, you're not sitting in front of them you're not talking to them it's just a it is kind of an impersonal conversation um and I was just, I got so turned off on that, um, because I do have some, I'm, I'm really bold and I'm passionate about things, but when you, when I go on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and it just, in this, you're, you end up with this onslaught of comments after comment after comment, and it, it just really doesn't end well, um, Every once in a while, you can. If two people are still civil, you can share thoughts and opinions the way you would normally in real life. And uh, there is some back and forth that can happen that is positive and constructive. But for the most part, that's not what happens. So I really stepped away from that completely from social media and a lot a long time I thought well if I don't do it who will but that's not 
That doesn't mean it's positive, though, if you participate just for the sole purpose of being um, that one guy. You know, whether it be political or religious or just general stuff, it, it, any of those, it doesn't really matter. Um, as I've taken this apologetics class, though, um, and some other Liberty University classes I've taken, um, it has fundamentally changed how I think about communicating ideas and disagreeing with people in a civil manner. Um, so for those of you who don't know, and I'm going to share this now, apologetics does not mean I'm apologizing. <laughs> I get asked that nonstop when somebody says, oh, what are you doing in, in school? What, you know, what's your, what's your major or whatever? And it's when, as soon as I say the word apologetics, it's, Oh, so you learn to apologize, and it's like funny, ha huh, ha. Huh. Well, no, <laughs> it's not what it is. So, just for your benefit, so you, uh, uh, when we talk about Christian apologetics, we we mean um, it comes from the Greek word apologia, and apologia can translate into in defense of. So, if you think about it, it's just a defense of the faith. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why that's necessary um for one it's as a christ follower our mission is to you know encourage and, and uh, help people find truth and find the reality of jesus and christ and how that changes you and um gives you real purpose real identity um where a lot of the hyper individualism that's around now will always end bad because all that's finite can be taken away uh, your identity can be just tore out from under you if let's say for instance <coughs> you're a um well you're a carpenter okay and you're you have a traumatic injury you no longer can be a carpenter. Well, if your sole identity is rooted in that, what happens? You, you kind of get depressed. You don't know who you are. and So that's just one example, but there's just a lot to it. But anyway, th this, so in defense of the faith is about how to communicate um, questions. How to answer um, common things and stuff. It's, it, it, they don't really get in depth with the material as to what to say that's really not the purpose of the class the purpose of the class is really to kind of say how you can engage people so um and in the the real heart of it is to not you're not out to win arguments or defeat your opponent um and if you see any debates a lot of times that's that can get there really quick where it's more of a I'm, I'm out for to defeat you when in reality with in this discipline it's it's really just about you I'll answer it this way you want the other person who is asking you questions or that you're um, you're encouraging or you're trying to spur thought is to have them walk away and go you know I really appreciated how they answered my questions so that means you you got to be a good listener for one you got to address the person in a uh, civil manner and you need to understand f for how you can anyway there's not you're never going to live in somebody's shoes but you should be able to um, at least try to understand their perspective and because everybody's life experience is different everybody has a different way of thinking about things even two people of the same community that's grown up the same you're going to have <laughs> you are it's going to be you're you're two different people so the 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 class has really just been about the the method and the why and to you know the importance of you know walking in their circle and engaging in that way but i've been thinking and applying that to really everything <clears throat> so when i'm in, at work even um 
you know, when one of my engineers or whatever has a real problem and it's, you know, my first, or they screw up, my first reaction is in my head, I'm thinking, man, you idiot, that's, <laughs> why are you doing that, this is so stupid, you know, so, but I got to process that and go into their shoes and be like, okay, I understand where this is going to, you know, where you're coming from, how you would, you know, how you get there and let's work on this solution this way, this way, this way. Um, or if I'm dealing with a competitor too, um, that's even more critical because they're, they might not have the same approach. Um, but it, it always ends better when you approach them with respect and you get in their circle and you kind of work in their world and, you know, you're, you're discussing their thoughts and ideas in their circle. And then from there, you kind of pull that out and say, okay, here's your A, B, and C that we just talked about where where we're at and that we agree with and that, you know, what, what our, um, what we need to do and what we're pr problems we're trying to solve. We got to establish all that. And then we can talk about solutions and those, those are going to be counter to what they've have in plan sometimes. But the idea though, is that you're approaching these things, <clears throat> um, with the, the other person rooted and their, uh, with respect and dignity and civility and that's and and that seems like it should be second nature to everybody but we're in a world of uh, where you're pushed to live out your individualism uh, counter to conformity as the utmost importance <laughs> so you're your happiness, your desires, and everything trump everything else, and that doesn't work. But that's what that's what our if you look around at the advertising and stuff that we got going on and all that kind of that's really what they're pushing things for. So it's been really great to <laughs> have some have some real you know teaching on these kind of methods. So that's been that's been really good. Now I'm not, and again I'm not really going on Facebook and uh, um, doing this either because I still think that's not it doesn't matter how civil you are, people don't respond that way. Now I'll say all that the other day I did. And it wasn't even about anything political or Christian or lifestyle, anything like that. It was really about dog breeds. I'm an avid dog lover. Been a dog person forever. Love dogs. Have, I've had dogs forever. Um, and I have a pit bull. We have three dogs. And one of, one of, excuse me, one of them is a pit bull mix. And she's the sweetest dog. <laughs> I mean, um she's just wonderful and this person was after the what was just animate about dog breed bands and was throwing out how many people are killed by pit bulls and all this stuff and while I recognize that I mean you know there's a lot of dogs who are powerful animals and and at the end of the day, every, people need to understand, no matter how big or small that dog is, it's a dog. It's not a human. It's not a baby. It's not your kid. It's a dog. And that's important. If you treat the dog like a kid or a baby, the dog will, <laughs> will not have, um, will not be will not be trained correctly for one thing and will not have the right attitude and will be ripe with um problems that could lead to injury no matter what dog it is pit bulls are common for wrong purposes and it's not the breed it totally is not the breed it's the people and you can and his argument was basically that it was genetics and they're designed this way but um 
I that only went so far though. I, I, I said my brief piece about I showed him a picture of my little um um my daughter who was I think one at the time laying on the floor with my pit bull and she used to do it all the time. Now, here's what I here I'll say about this. Me and my wife never let my daughter and we still don't um be with the dogs without us being around even now as sweet as the dogs are they're still dogs and we got to be there to um manage that interaction kids will not understand not to pull ears or smack the dogs and all that kind of stuff now you can you desensitize the dogs from interactions and stuff to help that situation out. And some dogs never will be comfortable with that. Just like people. Some people will never be comfortable with um, close uh, contact with other people. Some people will never, um, don't like, pe you know, somebody touching them. You know, it's the same thing with dogs. There's some dogs that just won't do that. But even with a, even with a dog that does, th you don't want to take that chance that you you open you leave that open for a, a, bo a poor interaction that gets somebody hurt um i had a basset hound mix that i loved tremendously just to, and, and i had a, so much trouble with him i spent a lot of money on training and I worked with him a long time and he was just a but he got to be a really good dog but the one thing that he did did do was if you were to wake him up or startle him he would snap at you um my son at the time was 13 12 or 13 years old right and and to he was on my son's bed sleeping my son went to move him just tap him on the butt say hey you you gotta move toby reached around and bit his head not a big, not a big thing. It did, you know, it did clip him, but that's, that's what he did. So when we were going to, we knew we were having our kids and they were going to come home. We, we had to get rid of Toby. Um, we did not want that to happen. And he was a beautiful dog. Wonderful. Um, and I hated that, but my kids are way more important than my dog. And I wasn't going to take the dog and just sequester him in some basement corner or um, put him on a muzzle for long periods of time. I didn't think that was necessary. He really need, want, needed to be with a family who could love him and encourage him and stuff. So he went to a Bass and Hound rescue and he's happy as a clam. But that's so I, I just say all that because that that interaction, though, was quick and, and this other person chose to just write novels about comments but I didn't engage you know because they're only going to go so far and you know I say my say a little bit of peace and then leave it around it but there's sometimes when you have to recognize that it's, <laughs> it's futile there's no point in it and it's not going to do any good any good so um I, I I'm really looking forward to having constructive conversations with people of various different cultures and interests and lifestyles and stuff and just talking i and i enjoy that anyway um but i'm finding out and learning and and trying to trying to change to be better at it and i think that's that's looking like a great plan but um at the end of the day man we have all kinds of different people here on this earth and even in our communities and everything, people from other countries and cultures and religions are all moving in and everywhere. Um, you have different, even in our own American society, you have different kind of um, microcultures and stuff that you need to be conscious of when you're communicating. Um, and it's it's fun when you approach it with respect and dignity, and you. You try to understand their perspective. And when you do connect and when you can have these conversations that matter, that's that's when real community happens. 
and uh, we need different perspectives you know not everybody can be a, a one political side of the fence or the other not everybody can have one particular interest or the other we need differences that's that's how our whole existence is fueled on this earth because there's all kinds of different purposes and um, different kinds of emotions and stuff that people have to deal with so that's my two cents for the day this is fantastic I really like this I don't this wouldn't be like a all day for me um, and I would suggest not a hot beverage with something like this, but the, uh, with an aromatic like this, uh, water, cold water would be suggested. A tea, cold tea. That's really good, but anyway, so I got the last week of, um, classes here. So I'm down to the wire with some papers and exams and stuff. So it's a busy, busy week and a busy work week too. So I'll be, well, <laughs> I'll be heads down for a while. So. Words of wisdom, hopefully, for some of you. Take my advice and do what you please. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to get back at it. Piping red beard. Later. <laughs>